I'm grateful to be here in the studio and grateful again to speak with our WTLN listeners. And here in the studio at this time, I wanted to let you know about a conference that we're going to be hosting. That conference is May 29th through the 31st, 2015, and it's our Call for Discernment conference entitled A Call to Arms. And the conference is going to be speaking to protecting children and families from media's menacing dark side, protecting children and families from media's menacing dark side. And uh, if you're like me, you've noticed the staggering advancement of technology in our day, just how quickly technology has advanced. And uh, this being a blessing from God, there's just so many resources at our fingertips uh, that we can learn more about the Bible, uh, we can learn more about God, that we can use to bless our families, bless our children. Uh, But uh, as the Bible teaches often what God intends for good, men corrupt for evil, and media and technology are certainly no exception to that. And so at the same time that media has become uh, a blessing in many ways, we see also how that's been corrupted to be a a horrible influence sometimes on our teens, a horrible influence on our family, and often because of the very ways that we parent or the very ways that we fail to parent. And so we want to use this conference as an opportunity to get more information to you about how to protect your children and family from the negative side of technology. We're very grateful that for this conference, we have guest speaker Trace Embry with us. And Trace is a nationally syndicated radio host of Licensed to Parent and also a long-time experience at running a residential counseling program for troubled teens uh, called Shepherd's Hill Academy. We're blessed to have Trace in the studio with us. Trace, how are you doing today? I'm doing great, sir. Oh, fantastic. We look forward to having you at the conference and just look forward to all the information that you'll be able to provide. I uh, pray that that will be a great blessing to our parents, our kids, our families. And one of the questions that I wanted to ask you while we have opportunity uh, is, Trace, the, the I guess related to technology, we're also going to spend a little bit of time talking about the influence of music uh, in our homes, the influence of music on our teens. Uh, we all you know, grew up listening to uh, secular music and popular music, and uh, we may have some experience ourselves with understanding how that influences us, uh, maybe mentally or spiritually. But speak to our culture today, Trace, and how music and even technology uh, has advanced that influence that, that music has on our teens. Sure. Uh, well, certainly uh, technology has advanced our opportunity to, to be influenced by music. Music is a tremendous, uh, as Frank Zappa said, that uh, music is, is a tremendous indoctrination tool. He's right. Uh, yeah. Plato, Socrates, Aristotle all had something to say uh, about the deep uh, uh, power and influence that music has on societies long before it was even electrified. It, one of those three guys, I forget, I forget which one, actually wanted to have music regulated by the state. Wow. They thought it was uh, so popular. And uh, as you uh, harken back to the uh, uh, 1960s, uh, rock and roll music was, was used in the cultural sexual revolution to, to advance uh, that agenda as well. But uh, technology with iPads now where kids can, you know, they can't really go from point A, a to point B without headphones. And uh, so, and they can hear these these uh, these sounds, these words, these beats and rhythms and chord progressions, uh, and you you'll never know what they're listening to unless you monitor these things. I mean, in, in my home, we have a no headphones policy. Uh, you, you're not if if I can't hear it, neither can you. That's the bottom line. Um, but music is incredibly powerful. Matter of fact, I was having a a conversation with Dr. Norman Geisler, and if you don't know who Dr. Norman Geisler is. You might know who Robbie Zacharias is, or Lee Strobel, or D. James Kennedy from your neck of the woods, uh, late D. James Kennedy, um, Josh McDowell. These guys are all Christian apologists who, who took uh, largely uh, a lot of their cues from a guy named Dr. Norman Geisler. And when I was talking, talking to Dr. Geisler, I, I said, Dr. Geisler, I'm going to make a statement. I want you to tell me your thoughts on this. I said, from my experience, I believe that music is probably the single most overlooked powerful tool of the devil used against our teenage population, our families, our church, and the American culture at large. How do you respond to that, Dr. Geisler? And he did not miss a beat. He said, I couldn't agree with you more. Above and beyond internet pornography. Now, that was before smartphones uh, came out, so it might have been eight, eight, ten years ago when I had this conversation with him. And since uh, uh, internet pornography is now on everyone's hip pocket with smartphones, that, that's debatable. I, I'll probably go back with pornography, but music is is way more powerful than anyone believes. And I've heard people say, well, you know, I listen to this, and I listen to that, and I turned out all right. 
And uh, I'm, I'm going to tell you something. You haven't yet turned out, and you don't realize how many hang-ups and strongholds in your life that you, that you currently deal with that you would never have tied uh, tied into the things that you allow yourself to be exposed to via music. And the music uh, was was what uh, got Lucifer kicked out of heaven. He was a, he was a, a, a worship leader back uh, then. Took a third of the angels with him. He's still working through music today. Now listen. God works through music today, too, Amen. and that's the confusing thing. Uh, a box said that all music should be for the refreshment of the human spirit, the glorification of God, and the refreshment of the human spirit. And unfortunately, we've used it to uh, more of the cathartic uh, the, uh, uh, purposes. Our kids today uh, use music to justify some of their anger, their rage, their, their, some of their perversions, uh, and uh, rather than for the art form that it is. And uh, you can package it up in art form. You can leg- you can legitimize anything when you call it art. Yeah, amen. And uh, we're definitely going to be talking about uh, that more at the conference, May 29th through the 31st, uh, Call to Arms. Uh, but I heard you mention also, Trace, that uh, within your own home, uh, you have rules set up for how – uh, music is to be accessed or listened to in the home uh, because I know you, you as a parent care about your kids and uh, want to protect your kids and family. So what, what might you say to a parent? Uh, I know parents are often for one reason or another fearful about setting up too many boundaries for their kids or they're concerned about you know what their teen might think or uh, the response they're going to get. How might you advise a parent um, considering that and how do they get started? Well, there's a fine line between legalism and, and just good good sense. And we, we want to be careful that we, we're not legalistic. Uh, a lot of people falsely look at the, the things that I'm teaching their kids, or sometimes the kids even say, you know, well, you think I should just listen to all Christian music? And listen to me. When you come to this conference, you're going to find out that some of the most dangerous music out there is being played within the church. Yeah, and, amen. And, uh, you, you know, the, the devil, well, it's got Christian lyrics. It's, you know, all about Psalms and Proverbs, you know. Yeah, it might sound like it comes from the jungle, but it's got all these these great Christian lyrics. Well, first of all, you, you have to be able to understand the lyrics, number number one. Number two, don't forget who the devil uh, is and what he did. He, he used Scripture itself, the Word of God. He spoke it to the Word of God, Jesus but he did it in the spirit of the enemy to accomplish the enemy's end. Now, he, he was speaking to Jesus himself, so he, he wasn't going to win that one, but our kids aren't quite as equipped as Jesus was. They're very naive. We're naive as parents. And um, uh, when we let our kids listen to some of this stuff, uh, uh, we're going to have to stand before God, I, I, I'm, af- I'm afraid, because we have not exercised uh, just what should be called common sense, which I realize in a postmodern wor- world they're there really can't be any common sense. Um, but uh, I think we're going to have to answer to God for this, some of the stuff that we've allowed our kids to be exposed to and engaged in, because I think a lot of this stuff grieves the heart of God. And it's not just the lyrics. It goes deeper than that. And, and these are some of the things that we'll be discussing. Yeah, thank you, brother. And yeah, it grieves us as well. We want to be well-informed. And I just want to exhort and encourage uh, parents out there listening uh, to – Put off being naive about these things and get informed. Our conference is May 29th through the 31st. It's our 2015 Call for Discernment conference entitled A Call to Arms. And Trace, if folks out there want more information about your ministry, and I would encourage parents out there to look up this information. You can find much that is helpful at Trace's website. Trace, where do they go to get more information about your ministry there? Well, for some very valuable resources, they can go to licensetoparent.org, licensetoparent.org. Dot org, and if they want to know more about our residential program and school, uh, shepherdshillacademy.org is, 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 our, is our website, but because we're over the radio and people probably won't know how to spell Shepherd's Hill, uh, go to uh, helpmytroubledteen.org, helpmytroubledteen.org, and it'll get you right to the Shepherd's Hill Academy uh, website. Fantastic. Trey, thank you so much for your ministry. Thanks for all that you do to help parents and kids, and really looking forward to having you at the conference. Uh, For you out there listening, go to protectthefamily.net to register for our 2015 Call for Discernment Conference entitled A Call to Arms. That's May 29th through the 31st. It's a ministry of Cornerstone Baptist Church. You can find more information at their website as well, cornerstoneorlando.org, or you can call our church offices at 407-971-7685. God bless you.